you're in the outdoors and you need help and you happen to have a cell phone connection, what's the best way to get help? To dial 911 or emergency services or to hit the SOS button on your inReach? And the obvious answer for a lot of people might be to hit the SOS button, but technology has been revolutionizing the way that 911 works. But overall, what you wanna do is get the fastest possible response time to your emergency. It's common sense, but the quicker that you get a response or somebody coming to help you, the better your chances of having a favorable outcome to your situation. So I spoke with three people in the search and rescue industry to see what the experts had to say about whether you should dial 911 or hit the SOS button on your satellite communicator. And what I learned was not what I was expecting to hear, so let me share it with you so that you know what to do when you're in a similar situation. Now, 911 dates back to 1968 when every phone had a physical address associated with it. It's been slow to catch up with new technology like cellular phones and GPS. And even today, when you call 911 from a cellular phone, some of the call centers that you reach will only get a limited amount of information. For example, in this case, they're gonna to have to call the carrier just to get the name of the person who's calling. The location is done through a system called triangulation, which is very imprecise. It can give a two kilometer radius, not the normal 12 to 15 feet that most modern cell phones are capable of with their onboard GPS. So enter a new technology called Rapid SOS. Rapid SOS is a private company that's now working with 99% of all the 911 call centers in the United States. And you can think of the Rapid SOS system as a pipeline connecting over half a billion connected devices with the people who respond to an emergency call. They take all the information from your phone, such as your GPS location, your medical information, like a medical ID, and they transfer that to the 911 call center so they have a complete picture of who you are and where you are. Then they can also take that information and combine it with other feeds from the area like video cameras, body cameras, and the positions of first responders. First responders can even use the system to track where they are in relation to the emergency and other assets on the ground. And having talked to some people in 911 call centers, this rapid SOS has been a game changer because it takes out a lot of the verbal communication needed, which is obviously error prone, and also combines all of these other data sources to give a very complete picture of the person who's calling and what their situation might be. Like I said, this is in 99% of the emergency call centers here in the United States. It's also in Canada, Mexico, and Brazil. If you have a smartphone with an operating system over iOS 12 or Android 9, you've already got Rapid SOS integrated into your phone and you'll be sending information like your location and your um, medical information. Just make sure you have the settings enabled on your phone to share those things because you can turn it off for privacy if you'd like. One of the things to know is that even if your carrier doesn't have reception where you are, you should always try 911 because other carriers will pick that 911 call up. The target or the average here in the United States is 14 seconds. That's what everyone shoots for in terms of responding to your 911 call, which is obviously faster than sending a message out over a satellite communicator. So if you have a cellular connection in the backcountry, dialing 911 could be a good bet, but it could also maybe not be the best choice. And if you're in a location that's used to people in the outdoors, maybe has hunting or hiking or whatever nearby, the call center that you're connected with should be familiar with how to handle emergency calls from outdoor areas. It's a little bit different, obviously, than just dispatching an ambulance or a police car. They're gonna have to know what assets to uh, call up in order to get you out of your situation. But if you're in an area that's not used to dealing with outdoor emergencies or the person on the switchboard happens to be new or inexperienced, it could be a problem because they might not know what asset to call, what search and rescue team, how to handle a situation that's just more than dispatching an ambulance, police, or a fire truck. There's also a potential issue because of where you are. You might not be connected to the closest cell phone tower, which connects to the closest 911 center. It could go to a cell phone tower that's farther away, in which case that 911 call center is going to have to call the other 911 call center to relay the message. You can also try texting 911, but a lot of call centers still don't have the capability to receive a text message. So there's a lot of variables in dialing 911 based on where you are. Obviously, if you're in an area that's used to people in the outdoors, dialing 911 should be okay. Now, what about a Garmin inReach? The great thing about a Garmin inReach is that it has worldwide coverage. You don't have to worry about where you are. You can just hit that SOS button and it's gonna to go to a call center that's experienced with doing backcountry and open water rescues. They've rescued over uh, 10,000 people now with Garmin inReach. It's a tried and true uh, system at this point. 
The downside, of course, is that on a phone call with 911, you can talk back and forth, communicate quickly, assuming your connection is decent. On a satellite communicator, you have to text those messages out, send them back and forth. There's a delay with the satellites. It's quicker than it was, um, but still, it's going to be slower than talking to 911. I've also been told by people in search and rescue that there can be a significant delay between when you actually contact Garmin response and when the search and rescue team gets contacted about the situation. And that has to do with the agreements that Garmin has in place with the different search and rescue entities. In some instances, they go to a state level uh, emergency office and then they have to go to a lower level and then maybe one or two other steps before they actually contact the search and rescue team or before somebody knows to deploy a search and rescue team. And that can take up to an hour, which is a downside of using this system. And if you're in the outdoors, whether you call 911 or hit SOS on an emergency beacon, be prepared to wait at least several hours for somebody to rescue you. It takes longer than it would if somebody's sending an ambulance to somewhere in the suburbs or a city, which is a matter of minutes. It's usually going to take several hours. I always bring the essentials. I bring enough to stay overnight, not necessarily a tent and a sleeping bag, all that kind of stuff, but you know, an emergency sleeping bag, some extra layers, just in case it takes uh, longer than I would expect. And also when you hit SOS, stay where you are unless there's a danger and you have to move because of a dangerous situation. If you move around, it makes it harder for the rescuers to find you. All right, what about devices that use Overwatch and Rescue, which is an SOS subscription service? These are devices like the Spots, the Motorola Defy, the Yuli phone, probably more coming in the future, who knows? But this is a little bit different than the Garmin response. First thing I want to mention is that when you use the Defy, there's a questionnaire that you fill out. And this questionnaire, I've heard from Search and Rescue, is a game changer because it gets to the point of what you need help for. So instead of playing the radio game or the text game back and forth with rescuers, you are able to answer the most pertinent questions and relay that as part of your SOS request, whether the problem is for you or somebody else, all kinds of different questions that will help them understand who you are, what you are, and what to do. Overwatch and Rescue, it's also a veteran-owned company and everyone on staff has experience in emergency services. There's ex-paramedics, there's ex-EMTs, and they have medical professionals that will be there to help you diagnose or triage any problem that you might have while you actually wait for somebody to come rescue you. Now, what's interesting is that there's a new partnership between Rapid SOS and Overwatch and Rescue where their systems have become integrated. And this is going to be help because when you hit SOS on a device that goes to Overwatch and Rescue, first of all, it's going to get all the information from your device, like your location, any kind of notes that you put in. But Overwatch and Rescue is also going to be able to pull in all of uh, the other data from Rapid SOS, maybe cameras, whatever it might be that's integrated with Rap Rapid SOS already to get a better picture of what's going on with you. And then they're also plugged in to the Rapid SOS outbound pipeline. So Rapid SOS doesn't just take information in. Rapid SOS has mapped your location to all of the appropriate 911 call centers. There's no more calls to the wrong 911 call center because of the wrong cell tower. What Overwatch and Rescue will do is they will help you deal with the situation and they'll take all the information they have, wrap it up into a nice package, and then route it directly through that Rapid SOS system to the precise location that needs to deal with your emergency. But if it falls outside of a 911 jurisdiction, Overwatch and Rescue has direct relationships with a lot of search and rescue organizations, including the Coast Guard, and they'll reach out to them directly. And that's the same uh, system that I mentioned earlier that the 911 operator said was a game changer. So it'll go directly into there and therefore expedite the response to your emergency. Part of that service is also giving the first responders a link with a map that shows your position and also giving them a way to communicate with you via your satellite uh, communicator. But on the other end, when the first responders are going to your situation with Rapid SOS, they can also plug into the Rapid SOS system and I think I mentioned this earlier, they can see where they are, they can see where their other assets are in case there's a search and rescue or something. It's really an incredibly powerful platform. So about emergency SOS on the iPhone, it's been around for a few years. It's still free, which is a great thing. And here in Southern California, there have been some incredible rescues done with it. There have been people in Angeles National Forest who've driven their car off the side of the road, have plunged hundreds of feet. Their phone has detected a crash and the phone has automatically called uh, or sent a message to uh, SOS 911 via satellite and people's lives have been saved because of that. Search and Rescue here had nothing but good things to say about it. it 
It also has a questionnaire at the beginning, like I mentioned with the Overwatch and Rescue, some of those devices did, and that has been a game changer in terms of knowing what's going on. The one Achilles heel in the system, at least at this point, is that it initially tries to send a text message to the 911 call center with all this information. Obviously, that's an automated process that's just easy. When a call center can't receive a text message, somebody from an Apple response center will phone that information into a 911 call center and they'll deal with it that way. So there's a little bit more of a lag there, but overall um, people in search and rescue have been saying good things about this. So that's a great asset. If you have an iPhone 14 or 15 or thinking about upgrading, probably worth doing just to have that capability. And this will be coming uh, in the very near future, I believe, to Android devices as well. Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. I'll let you know when that happens and tell you how to use it and uh, let you know what it's all about. So there's some devices, whether they're apps or actual hardware, that are listed as rapid SOS ready. What that means is that you can trigger an SOS call directly from that device. It just goes through with a precise location and lots of different rich information. So for example, some car makers are integrated with rapid SOS. And if you get in an accident, it'll automatically send all of that information right to the SOS call center with the car model, where you've been coming from, information about you, all that stuff that they need to deal with the emergency situation. It's also integrated into apps like Uber and Grubhub. So if you hit SOS on the Uber app or a Grubhub, it'll just automatically go through. It happens all through the app. And what's interesting too, as part of this um, Overwatch and Rescue partnership, if a Rapid SOS connected or a Rapid SOS ready device gets an SOS call and it doesn't fall into a 911 jurisdiction or it's out of cellular range, it'll get routed to Overwatch and Rescue who are you know used to dealing with backcountry or open water emergencies and can handle it effectively and then they can route it on to the appropriate department. So a little bit of a human touch with Overwatch and Rescue because these people understand maybe the nuances of an outdoor emergency. It's a little bit different than sending an ambulance. Also worth noting is that Overwatch and Rescue has direct agreements, uh, MOUs, Mem Memorandum of Understanding, I think it's called, um, with a lot of different search and rescue. So they don't necessarily have to go through another third party or an emergency party. They can go right to the uh, responding party to get that going as quickly as possible. So 911 or SOS over satellite. I think if you're in an area that has a robust outdoors community, active outdoors community, and you have a cellular connection, dialing 911 is gonna be the quickest way to get help. It's a lot quicker to talk over a cell phone, um, you know, verbally than typing out messages and sending them over a satellite back and forth. So try 911 if you can. If you can't, uh, I like the Overwatch and Rescue system package response center better than the other ones just because they have ex-emergency personnel uh, they're tied into rapid sos so that's going to save time they have direct agreements with people in search and rescue and they also can help me with any kind of medical problems along the way I have a whole video i did on them i went to their emergency response center i'll put a link to that up on the screen and under the video too if you want to check that out after that, I like the iPhone because you have the questionnaire on there and that'll go directly through to the 911 call center. And after that, the uh, Garmin inReach, which, you know, I'm, I'm ranking these just in my personal preference, but in, in no way is Garmin inReach a shabby operation. They've saved thousands of lives and it works all over the world. It's just if you have the luxury to choose between these, that's the path I would take. Also, I just wanted to let you know, everyone in Search and Rescue that I talked to uh, wanted me to share the fact that you need to be prepared for the outdoors. At the very least, carry the 10 essentials, make sure you have a flashlight, make sure you have layers to stay out overnight. You can dramatically increase the chances of your survival if you share your plans with somebody. All you have to do is just send a link to some hike or whatever you're doing. Uh, to another person. You can also send the first responder or the emergency group if you know that and just say, you know, doing this hike, I should be back by six. If you don't hear from me by seven, please call this number and report me missing. Make sure you have crash detection turned on on your phone if that's available, just in case you go off the side of the road and you can't hit SOS uh, yourself. That's a game changer as well. And also make sure that you're sharing your emergency information and your medical information and all of that is up to date on your phone. You can do that on Android and iPhone too. All right, guys, if you have any questions, if you have anything to add to this discussion, please leave me a comment. Uh, I appreciate it. Hopefully we can help some people uh, navigate what to do if they get into trouble in the outdoors together. Anyway, guys, stay safe and I will see you out in the trails.